the first oral presenter, Mr. Muhammad Reza, Muhammad Razi. He is a bioscience uh, PhD candidate from the Department of Bioscience, Faculty of Science, UTM. He graduated from UTM with a Bachelor of Science in Biology with distinctive academic and co-curricular records. His current study focuses on the development of breast cancer therapeutic strategy via sensitizing chemophotothermal therapy. His project involves the application of carbon nanotubes as the targeted drug delivery carrier in combination with local hypothermia treatment against EMT6 breast cancer in vitro and in vivo. Please welcome Mr. Muhammad Reza. Well, uh, thank you, Ms. Aisha. Okay, welcome. Uh, thank you, Ms. Aisha. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning, I bid to respected judges, honorable guests, and uh, to everyone. My name is Muhammad Reza bin Muhammad Razi, a PhD student from the Department of Bioscience, and I will present my slides entitled Chemophototherapy Synergy Effects of Peclitic Cell Loaded Carbon Nanotubes Mediated NRR on Antiproliferation Activity of EMT6 Breast Cancer Cells. Uh, globally speaking, breast cancer has remained as the dominant type of breast uh, of cancer worldwide with the 684,966 deaths occurs only in 2020 and about 32% of total female cancer in Malaysia has been diagnosed with breast cancer as has been stated by the Global Cancer Statistic in 2021. Available conventional chemo uh, Therapy such as uh, chemotherapy has been uh, practiced uh, with the usage of the chemotherapeutic drugs, but eventually uh, chemotherapy has led to severe and acute adverse effects such as nausea, vomiting, and hair loss. And hence, uh, the search for the more efficient alternative therapy has been conducted among researchers, and that's why my studies came into uh, into the slot in which I propose the application of the carbon nanotube, which is a nanomet carbon based nanomaterials, uh, in to to combat two strategy in which uh, chemophototherapy and alternative phototermal therapy for breast cancer management. As I mentioned earlier, the chemophototherapy, uh, chemotherapeutic drugs uh, that has been used cause adverse effect and one of them is paclitaxel. Paclitaxel is one of the most successful drugs ever created by the US FDA, but uh, eventually uh, paclitaxel is highly hydrophobic, this causing low solubility in aqueous environment, this causing a uh, problem with systemic delivery and cause acute adverse reaction. Meanwhile, on the other hand, the alternative part, which is the hyperthermia, uh, is the elevation of the body temperature at the range of 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. And this hyperthermia monotherapy has been shown to have uh, immunomonotherapeutic uh, effects in treating breast cancer. But hyperthermia has been reported to be uneven heat distribution, short heat retention time, and low death penetration. And that's why carbon nanotube has come to save uh, the problem in we, uh, these two part of peclitic cell in hyperthermia in which carbon nanotube is a thin layer of benzene rings carbon that has the size range of 20 to 90 nanometer and carbon nanotube has been reported in literature to be a safe and stable carrier with a high thermal conductivity that could fulfill the hyperthermic purpose with a large surface area for drug delivery design and also minimally invasive for in vivo application and that's why we hope that uh, with the loading of the PTX or the peculiar cell onto the CNTs and also the hyperthermia uh, effect can amplify the, the, the efficiency of the breast cancer treatment. And the aim of this study is to develop an efficient alternative breast cancer therapy, while the objective, the specific objective for this uh, study is to evaluate the antiproliferative activity of the PTX CNTs with a combination of the hyperthermia against the EMT6 cells. And to achieve uh, the study, uh, the objective of the study, uh, we first started with the loading of the PTX onto the CNT, in which uh, this uh, falls under the materials preparation part. And then uh, the material uh, will be exposed to, has been exposed to the cells, EMT6 cells that has been subcultured. And then we irradiated the cells uh, with uh, NIR, near infrared radiation, for 
two minutes and then we evaluate the anti-proliferative activity of the EMT6 cells by the MPT assay. I would like to emphasize that uh, this study aligned with the sustainable development goals from the United Nations and it falls under the third clause which is to provide good health and well-being uh, worldwide. And uh, for the scientific fi findings, we found out that uh, with the application uh, of the delivery design for of the PTX onto the CMT. Sorry, Mr. Reza, for interrupting. Okay. There are another five minutes more left. All right. Thank you, Ms. Aisha. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, the CMTs uh, has been delivered on uh, inside the cells could further release the PTX that has been loaded onto the CNTs and significantly reduced uh, the cell's viability while increasing the anti-proliferative activity of the EMTC cell. And according to the figure one, you could see that there's a significant reduction in the cells that has been treated with the PTX CNTs as compared to the PTX only, where the PTX only is the free PTX that uh, we dissolve in, in the media and uh, expose it to the cells uh, to mimic the chemotherapeutics uh, practice in the normal medical uh, application. And after uh, we found out that the delivery design uh, has been uh, successful uh, inside the EMT6, so we further want to find out whether if we re irradiate the cells with the NIR code, uh, significantly increase or amplify the effects of the anti-proliferative activity. Hence, uh, figure two shows the combined therapy of the PTX, CNT with the NLR as the HT to amplify, uh, that can amplify the anti-proliferative activity of the cell. While uh, in this case, we could see that in the red line, which is the combined treatment of the HT, PTX and CNT shows a very uh, excellent uh, reduction in the cell's viability as compared to the PTX. Only PTX with CNT or the PTX HT uh, treated cells and therefore uh, we could conclude that uh, the NIR irradiation that we irradiate onto the cells could facilitate the release of the drugs from the CNT and in the meantime could also uh, uh, vibrate, uh, could also provide an even, even and uniform heat distribution to the cells. And from the findings, uh, I could propose some mechanisms that could be related to the fate of the PTX loaded CNTs in the tumor microenvironment in which uh, the drug that has been loaded onto the carbon nanotubes will enter the cells through the uh, what we call that endocytosis uh, pathway and then the drugs will be released uh, from the carbon nanotubes due to the pH uh, alteration by the lysozyme and the PTX will directly move into the nucleus and they will perform the PTX mechanism for its uh, anti-cancer activity. Meanwhile, uh, the CNTs that has been set inside the cells or inside the cancer cell uh, that has been irradiated with the near infrared radiation could emit and vibrate the energy to form a, a greater even and uniform heat distribution and this could also benefit the hypertermic properties of the uh, of the therapy in which it, it will eventually lead, lead to cancer death and uh, from this study, uh, I understand and I uh, that I, I could conclude that the chemophototherapy therapy of the PTX with the CNTs and HT significantly promotes anti-proliferative activity of the EMT6 breast cancer cells. And I would like to say that uh, this study could benefit to the society in and the country in terms of providing the understanding of the combined therapy through its novelty. And the second one is it is safe and minimally invasive as compared to the existing conventional therapy since we are reducing the dosage of the chemotherapy, chemotherapy drugs. Uh, but for now, it's just only at the in vitro level. Uh, the third one is uh, we we try to implement direct implication of breast cancer in breast cancer treatment in which we, we provide uh, further choices or options in alternative therapy. And last one, uh, I would say that it is uh, economically wise since carbon nanotubes uh, can be bought in a cheaper price. And also we, 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 we directly reduce the administration of the, what we call that, paclitaxel for the chemotherapy purpose.
And in summary, I would say that uh, carbon nanotubes uh, specifically and in general, nanomaterials are very versatile uh, materials and can be further improve the future cancer management. I, I wouldn't say that carbon nanotubes is the definite treatment or the definite or the most suitable materials for the breast cancer management but uh, because uh, various of nanoparticles has been tested for cancer man, uh, cancer treatment such as liposome, gold nanorods and uh, even silver nanoparticles but in my case uh, my purpose is to combine the both drug delivery design and Mm, hyperthermia, hyperthermia purpose. So uh, we screened through several material and we found out that carbon nanotube has, uh, can fulfill both function uh, simultaneously. And for a future recommendation, uh, I would say that our treatment is not that specific as compared to the to other targeted drug delivery design. But uh, to further increase the specificity of the carbon nanotubes, uh, we we plan on coating the or modify the carbon nanotube with the coating of the folic acid since folic acid has uh, uh, the folate, folate receptor has been found abundance on the breast cancer cell. So folic acid could help in targeting the cancer cells uh, specifically at the moment. And I think that's all from me. This is my reference for this presentation. And I would like to thank my SV, I mean SV Dr. Karuna Najamon, my co-SV Dr. Mahiza Erna Mahmoud Salim, and my Cancer Research Laboratory, and also Cancer and Infectious Disease Group from the Faculty of Science. And I would like to, uh, to thank our Ministry of Education Malaysia for funding us with a grant for this research. Uh, with that, Thank you for lending me your ears. Have a good day. Okay, welcome, Mr. Reza. Okay, thank you very much for your um, presentation. Okay, now let's start with our Q&A session. Okay, from Facebook user, there is one question. Uh, okay, I, I'm on the way there. <laughs> okay. Uh, is it question from Dr. Yani? Oh, no, no, uh, Dr. 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 Juan first. Is it? Yes. Uh, how do you confirm the PTS will be fully loaded and, and free from leaching, especially during... Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joan, for the question. Okay, for the first one, how do you confirm the PTS will be fully loaded to the CNT? Okay, for this part, under I think it, it, it falls under the pre term preparation of the materials we we characterize uh, uh we characterize the materials beforehand but i couldn't provide the data since the the time that, that has been given me is limited but uh we we evaluate the characterization of the C ptx cnt through uh fdir analysis since it is the most basic simple step that is cheaper and quick and a, a quick fast uh, fast analysis and then we also uh, do the HPLC analysis to measure the concentration to detect the concentration the actual concentration of the PTX that has been loaded onto the CNTs and from the HPLC analysis we found out that 28% uh, of the PTX that uh, we, we, we formulate uh, has been successfully loaded onto the CNTs and up until now 28% is the highest uh, loading capacity that we 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 achieve uh, for the for the loading of the PTX onto the CNTs and free from leaching especially during anti-proliferative activity uh, okay for this part the mechanism of the PTX itself is uh, is uh, is really specific in which PTX will only be released at a certain pH. For example, uh, in the in this uh, in this case, the pH of the lysozyme inside the cells uh, is is the same as the optimum release pH of the PTX. So uh, the PTX will not, uh, or I, I could say PTX is uh, unfavorably cannot be released unless the pH is uh, a slightly acidic in which in this case, uh, it, it really helps us uh, since uh, the pH of the lysozyme inside the cells is uh, is the same as the optimum pH of the release PTX, okay? So is uh, from Dr. Yani, is there any occurrence 
of pathogenicity and genotoxicity of the cell during the invasion. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Yani. Uh, yes, uh, we do some morphological study of the EMT6 breast cancer cells after both treatment, and we could say that uh, there are alteration in the nucleus uh, in which we could say that uh, it forms a a multipolar spindle fiber and then it, uh, it, it is causing uh, the cells to be uh, polynucleated. It means that uh, we have uh, a nucleus, a single nucleus inside the cells, but it, after the cells has been irradiated with the NIR ex exposure to the peculated cell, the cells, uh, the chromosome become, the nucleus becomes like multinucleated. That is what we observe. And in this case, uh, uh, it it is uh it is the same as reported from uh, the group as well since uh uh peculiar cell itself helps in uh providing genotoxicity and mutagenicity to the cells. In this case, we hope that uh peculiar cell uh, the mutagenicity will helps in providing more death to the cancer cell, and that's why uh, I say before that peculiar cell in chemotherapy practice is kind of uh unfavorable since uh, it also causes mutagenicity, mutagenicity, mutagenicity to normal cells. Uh, okay, from Dr. Hanis, besides CNTs, what are the nanomaterials that has been used based on previous study? Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Hanis. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's uh, a lot of versatile other nanomaterials for, uh, uh, for this application. For example, I found out that uh most uh most of the time uh researchers uh put their the interest in gold nanoparticles and then silver but silver has not been really wide widely used in this application other than that uh liposome is one of the popular nanomaterials since liposome is much more friendlier and it can it can load anything i would say anything since we can cater what what kind of content what kind of I would say, of treatment that we want to look inside the liposomal uh, sac. Yeah, uh, I think uh, that's all from my understanding. If, uh, if I, uh, I have